Hello, I'm Elaine Stevens and I want to welcome you to Artbeat. You're watching Art Beat, where art is the heartbeat of South Mississippi, and I have a riddle for you. Which artist in Ocean Springs knows how to make a great strawberry soda on top of creating works like this? Where well, you're going to meet the most elegant lady who hails from New Mexico originally, but she calls herself a true Mississippi artist. Stay with us and meet Norma Seward. We'll be right back right after this message. One of the most glorious things about the Mary C. O'Keefe and the IP Culinary Cafe is the artwork in here. And of course, we're looking at some of the work by Ocean Springs artist Norma Seward, who happens to be our guest right here on Artbeat today. Norma, thank you so much for joining us. It was my pleasure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have to tell you, the artwork in a kitchen really makes the food taste better. <laughs> Good artwork. Good artwork, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the shot that we saw initially, you had told me a little bit about that, was, uh, was painted from a photograph in the Delta. Mm -hmm. And tell us, the, the colors in it are just magnificent. Tell us a little bit about that piece. Well, I, it was kind of... Um, a rainy afternoon and I put the sunset in because I just felt like it needed to be there and uh, when we go up to the Delta um, you just drive along and I was photographing through a moving car window and because my husband won't stop but it just sort of talked to me because yeah. you just go by field after field after field all flat oh, and then true. when sunset, you have geese that fly over, and it's just wonderful. Well, you've done it great justice, because I have to say, not only are the colors far more vivid than the fields that you see in the Delta, but I love the wraparound effect on the painting, the way you took uh, the paint all the way around to the sides of it and gave it such perspective that way. Well, that's a gallery wrap, and uh, you can treat it your sides any way you want to, mm. but I think the best for me uh, that I enjoy the most is to re continue the painting. And then uh, if somebody wants to get a frame, they can. If they don't, they don't have to. It really is. It's luscious. And uh, I don't know if you can see it from this perspective here, but there's lilac. Mm-hmm and deep green, mm -hmm. and the terracotta and the orange of the sunset. It's just magnificent. What do you call that? I can't even remember. I guess I called it sunset in the delta, which is not very, <laughs> not very imaginative. <laughs> but uh, it, it spoke to me. It was something I wanted to do. Well, you know what I love about it is you took the South Mississippi sunset and you placed it in the delta. So you can see, you know, the beauty of the South Mississippi sunset coming to the Delta. They could use a little bit of that. Well, yeah, kind of rainy there, but Absolutely. I'm sure they have big sunsets there, too. Well, behind us, you know, we started the segment off with uh, what I call autumn leaves. I mm -hmm. mean, you could almost hear the song, Autumn Leaves. So and I think that does sort of epitomize that it does. feel. Uh-huh. It's uh, fallish, and I did from a photograph I had taken, and uh, just... I love painting trees. They just talk to me. Well, you do them beautifully. And yeah. uh, it might be that I loved climbing trees when I was younger. And I probably would do it today if I could find a branch low enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you join me? <laughs> yes. Oh, of course. But, you know, I have a thing about that. I can get in the tree, but I never can get out of the tree. So oh. you'd have to paint me in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> like you stay. I'll I'd send stay you lunch. <laughs> So now the other painting up there is similar. It's almost like a sister painting to this one down here um, on, the, on the counter. Mm -hmm. A little bit about that painting. Well, um, I'm going to do a demonstration uh, for Sandra Hill Hallett's class. Oh, and Sandra Junior Hallett, yes. uh -huh. And so I thought, well, before I do that, I better figure out what I'm going to paint. And I had been working on something similar, and I thought, well, I'll just do it. But it just went s smooth, that and it just whipped right through there. And so in the fall, we do have red trees. You have, yes, uh, we do. and people don't realize it. The popcorn trees turn peachy, pink, mm -hmm. and then go to some areas red. 
And we have the red maples a lot that change. And so uh, that's just my talk about that. Well, Norma and I met each other a couple of years ago at the Peter Anderson Festival, mm -hmm. and I was immediately drawn to your work. And so today, Artbeat is going to go on a little bit of a trip. We're going to actually go visit Norma in her studio, and we're going to find out more about that strawberry soda, too. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back right after this message. So, yeah, we wow. put up a chimney. Well, I see, I mean, this is the world of a creative person with cats and bottle trees and the woods and you said an occasional fox. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they've come up and they're quite tame. It's unbelievable. It's beautiful. Well, we're back with uh, more of Norma Seward here in Norma's Nook. And what a nook it is, too. It's just custom made for you. Right. By someone we know and love. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Inside joke there, but uh, the work in here that you put out is just extraordinary. I have over in this corner and back of um, our TV camera is a storage for unused, our unused new canvases. New canvases. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then I have a screen that if I were going to go downtown, I'd have uh, something to hang up. And this was a design on an invitation that a friend made, and I had Th Joe frame it. This is not your work? No, no. Well, th there's something about, every time I come into an artist's gallery, and I've done this so many times with Artbeat, I, I turn into like a 10-year-old that wants to touch everything. And I can't help it, but I was immediately drawn to this. But this is not one of our um, Norma's work, but mm -mm. It's, it's interesting to see how other artists collect other artists. Yeah, I have a whole wall in there. If you want to go and look yeah. in the house, I'd love to show you that. Sure. I mean, I think that's fascinating. It's like other, it's like writers reading other authors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do tell about this painting over here that we're looking okay, at. Okay, the one on the bottom, there's two paintings here. The one on the bottom, I'm thinking about putting in the Singing River Art Exhibit. Uh -huh. And this one up here, I just finished. I'm still working on it. And um, here, I'm turn this around and then you can see them better. There. And uh, uh, I was painting from memory. Somebody said you need to draw something long enough where you can paint from memory. <laughs> and this was down at a friend's house and she's since moved. But I had a limited palette of um, yellow light, orange, cambium orange, um, ultramarine blue, that's and I was using quinacridone, which I can't pronounce very well, magenta, and uh, uh, of like course a white. Dash of pink. Well, that pink is uh, a wash from a version of red that. light. Yeah. Uh -huh. Red yeah. lights in there. Can be a red light and a phthalo green. Well, now we teased the audience with a little bit about your making a strawberry soda. So. The oh, I was so excited today when I went into Love Lush Drug Store because <laughs> I'm an old soda jerk from yeah, way back. Yeah, you come from a family that <laughs> had, had, a, drug had store. a drug store. Had a, and it was family run, just about like Loveless. And it just brings back so many wonderful memories when I went in. But I went in today because they have their soda fountains set up. I know. And I didn't know whether they had this narrow stream of soda water and they do. You can get an old-fashioned ice cream soda there because I just <laughs> showed the young man how to make it. I think that is amazing. And how did you make that, Norma? You, you start with syrup. You have a good tablespoon of ice cream. You stir up. Then you put it into the fizz water mm -hmm. that comes out of the stream and you fizz that up a while and put a little bit more water, soda water of course, and two blobs of ice cream some more fizz and that brings the foam up and then you put a little whipped cream on it and a straw and a spoon to and eat it's it. a work of art by Norma Seward, an That's original. Original. <laughs> original strawberry soda. So you may be lucky one of these days to catch her down at Loveless Drugs. This is one of our local celebrities obviously and she not only creates beautiful work on canvas, but she creates strawberry sodas. <laughs> I think that's homemade. 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 Real. Now, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about your background as an artist and where you grew up. I grew up in the center of New Mexico. Uh, my father moved there when we were, when I was in the second grade, and that was about 1941, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh -huh. 
and I start the second grade in Estancia, New Mexico. Now they name wine after that. Yes, they do. Yeah, and it means ranch, and it was a ranching farming community in, New, in the center of New Mexico, 50 miles east of Albuquerque. Had no really art education in the high school there. You just sort of did a few things, craftsy. They didn't have it then. That wasn't offered. But it is truly an artistic area. When you go to Albuquerque these days, mm -hmm. I mean, there, it's just brimming with audit, artists. And Santa Fe particularly Santa is, Fe is uh, one of the major art yeah, absolutely. places to go to sure. in the United States. And Taos. And, and Taos, of course. And of course Durango, Colorado, Red River, New Mexico. So that's where you grew up. Now, mm -hmm. But you've been in, in Mississippi uh, for 40 years, and you consider yourself a Mississippi artist. I do, because this is where I really develop as an artist. I went to the University of New Mexico and took up art, majored in art. And I had gone to a girls' school in St. Louis, and they do those aptitude tests, house painters, car mechanic your favorite color, you know, and they just the <laughs> repetition. I just filled all that out and thought, hmm. And then when it came back, they said, well, why don't you major in art? That's your, where your, that's aptitude, where your aptitude is. And I thought, oh, well, I like that idea. I'll do that. So that's where it is. So that's where it began. Uh -huh. Now, do you like to work in different, uh, with different mediums? Things, mediums? Yes, uh -huh. I do. Uh huh. I do. I'm, I'm a little slow getting into the collage with it, but I could if I would. I'm just stuck right now in acrylic. But it's beautiful. It has a depth of feel of, of almost oils because of the way you, you create it. Uh, yeah, I think that when somebody asked me the other day, um, it was just watercolor oil and um, I think mixed media or pastels. Uh -huh. And I said, well, can we work in acrylic? Oh, yes. Well, what is acrylic? And I said, well, it's a plastic. It really honestly it is. Is. It is. But it's a water base. The convenience is easy to clean up, like when you paint the wall. It's easy clean up, dries fast, and they developed it so much that we can just use it in any way you want to. Well, the colors are vivid. And yeah, they and, are. And you don't have to be as cautious with it as you do with oils. Is that correct? I mean, That's right. It's safer to use mm -hmm. because you're not inhaling any petroleum uh, byproduct, which is important. So. Do you look back on your art career, do you remember the first thing that you created? Probably a poster in high school, which I hated to do. And I guess I always drew or something. I can remember going to, with my brother to the kindergarten. Uh -huh. And I just went as a companion for him. And I learned, they were doing figures, but I learned to make figure eights. Well, I was drawing that on everything. They just, <laughs> I love the swing of it. And uh, I think the nun had told my mother that maybe I would go into art. I just seemed to have a knack for it. It was figure eights. <laughs> smart nun. Yeah. yeah. Very smart nun. And we thank her for that. Well, thank you. So we're going to take a little stroll around your studio. Shall we move around here a little yeah, bit? Yeah, let I me move. Joe made my easel. This is one nice thing. Your husband. We have bicycles stored here. So and behind <laughs> every good artist is a husband. That's right. <laughs> and behind every man artist, there's a woman. That's okay. true. Absolutely. Now, Joe has taken up and he cuts my mats and frames things for me. And that's why I have assortment of frames. And he stretches my canvases. All my canvases are perfectly squared because he's that way. Now, how did, you, how did you convince him to become so involved in your career? I don't know. He just liked to, he started off. Well, maybe your honey helped him because mm -hmm. he was building the studio, as you She's said. referring to Jim Smith who built uh -huh. the studio. He did a and magnificent job. Yes, he did. <laughs> it's nice. It's, it's tight. It's cool. It and is. it's warm. And everywhere Jim went, he, Joe watched him. Wow. And he ran everywhere, every step he made. Jim runs everywhere. And I think he just got a knack. Well, Watching it's, it's so wonderful to learn from one another. And mm -hmm. obviously, you and Joe are quite a team because what you're creating, I see this huge canvas in the background. Is there any way, should we take a break and come back and let well, you? Well, I can pull it out. Okay. I've got some I could show you. Oh, this wow. is similar to the one that was down at the Mary C. Right. And see, I need, I it's enjoy. a little bit larger. Yeah, twice the size. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, the little one, the little one. and. Uh, so I thought, well, I just finished painting that. Maybe I could do the, the what we, we were saying, a 
you know, I love the way you handle your canvas because those who are observant of it and, and respectful of it want to do it with such gentleness. And you are very, I mean, you just kind of grab it. <laughs> yeah, and this one is a new one, and I really haven't shown it at all, but oh, it's wow. a sentimental piece of New Mexico. Tau, uh -huh, yes, of Taos. That's beautiful. I hadn't been to the Pueblo since I was about four or five years old, and last summer I went. There's a couple things I might do, but that's with any artist. Like um, they said Picasso was going through the museum, happened to have his art equipment, saw one of his paintings on the wall in the museum, and he took it off and worked on it. So right there it, in the museum. I think this is beautiful. Thank you. I really, uh, it has uh, spoke to me in many different levels on this. I I've enjoyed that. painting it's them. just beautiful. Thank We're going to take a short break and uh, come back with more Norma Seward's work right after this message. Stay with us. Okay. That is lovely. Okay. Welcome back to Artbeat, and my guest today is Norma Seward. And you can see that there is variety, versatility in her work. Is, was this your blue period? <laughs> this is my blue period. <laughs> I did um, a larger one for a friend, and I just took it to her house to see, is this the right size canvas you want? Mm -hmm. And she wanted the whole painting. So I did uh, a smaller size. It's beautiful. For my place. I, I, love, I, mean, I love the totality of the blue and how you worked with that color in, in, in such depth, and there's no monotony involved, obviously, because it has such beauty oh, in this blue. I hadn't of that. Yeah, well, is, thank I mean, you. you know, and lavenders. The uh -huh. contrast of the oranges and the reds into this wonderful, rich blue is lovely. And then we have this phenomenon behind it, which um, I marvel at how the, different this is from the rest of your work. Well, this is an earlier piece. I bet this has to be about five years old. And I've promised it for, to give to a friend who had gotten married and is married. And so I want to give it to her. And I set it out to do that. And I haven't been back down where I run into Gretchen. But this is Gretchen's painting. So, so. what do we name this? Uh, banana trees. I love it. <laughs> Tropical beautiful. banana trees. Uh -huh. It's just gorgeous. Do you? Norma. Thank the you. The colors are so vivid. Thank you. Now, do you know ahead of time what you're going to be painting? Do you plan on that, or how does that work? I think you plan. You have to mm -hmm. plan. You, you don't just go out and start. Even if I'm doing a small piece, I have a small pashad which I call pashads, which are small learning pieces. Yes. And I frame them, and I do have one around the corner there. But Now, that's a, that's a unique word to me. I, I've never heard that. Tell me what that word is. It's a French word for studying paintings, and it's P-H-S, pashad, P, I have to look at it, P-E-S-H-A-D. Well, I love that. So it's a, it's a small canvas, then, where you actually learn how to create something larger. If you um, talk a minute, I'll run and get one. Well, we'll get it. Okay. Let's just, let's just do this for one second. I just need to know, from all the work that I've seen you do, who do you feel your main inspiration is? I think every artist in uh, Ocean Springs and up wow. and down the coast can say a big thank you to Pat Odom. She's a wonderful she, she art truly teacher. Is. And we're going to have her right here on Artbeat when she's ready. Okay. So. And so as far as a teacher would go, I would put her down as a number one in this wow. area. Um, I was taking lessons in New Mexico because I went to the University of New Mexico. And um, in St. Louis, I was at uh, Lindenwood. And I guess uh, if you talk right now, some artist that's just blown me away is uh, T-Bone. And I love his work. He did the big, um, um, oh, cakes and pies and things like that. But his landscapes are out of this world. And I would love to just talk to him. Oh, I love the delight in your voice when you talk about that. Because that's true inspiration, isn't it? Uh, it is. I just, and he just blew me away. Uh, it really just grabbed me. Uh-huh. Well, it's, it's so wonderful to be so... Uh, enamored of our local artists as you are and to give her such kudos because she will really pat does well deserve that yes she and, does you know, normally you you would hear artists say oh picasso or someone or dolly or someone of that magnitude but that's true artistic feel because an appreciation for your colleague i think when you commend someone like pat well, there's the other thing, painting on the Gulf Coast, people are interchangeable. 
uh, they're willing to share what they learn. That's that true. Some places you go and they've got a secret. I don't want anybody to know how to do, well, that's, do this. Well, that's also true. And um, there's always been an openness on the group on the Gulf Coast. And uh, I go to Mississippi Colony and we have instructors from all over the United States come and teach. And they're always amazed the givingness of the whole group with each other. Yes, the Mississippi Colony is something we had spoken to Chris Bird about. I believe mm -hmm. it's up in North Mississippi, and you mm -hmm. go there strictly to paint. Strictly to paint. That's right. Uh -huh. We're going to take a short break because you're going to get your pushad for us, right? Yes, I'm okay. going to get we'll my pushad. We'll be right back right after this with a pushad. <laughs> You're watching Artbeat, and you're actually looking at a Peshad, which in truth is a study, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what it and, is. Uh, this is the work of Norma Seward, who we have been talking with this half hour. Now, you said a Peshad, which is a study, needs to be done in about 45 minutes. At the most. Why at is the, that? Because they want you to get in, look at the color, get your value, lay it down, and get out. And if you paint that way, with more certainty, um, you grasp something. It just speaks to you. And I've been fortunate, I've painted quite a few Peshads on location. And when I paint on location and do a Peshad quickly, I sell the painting. Well, we're not surprised at that. Well, thank you. But now, the dimensions are usually what? I think about 7 by 10, not any bigger. I like the diminutive quality of it, though, because it shows a lot of detail to me. Well, is an it might have been because I spent a little more than 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it shows. <laughs> well, thank you. I, uh, I enjoy doing them because they're on location. And when you paint on location, you see nuances in your work that you don't see anywhere else. You see nuances in the trees as the sun's moving across and the changes. And uh, you just get a better depth in your work. Now, is there a particular time of day or, or a particular time of the week that you prefer to paint, or do you paint every day? I would like to say I paint every day, but I don't. I paint every Tuesday and Friday for sure, and probably a half a day somewhere in between. So about two and a half days a, a week I do spend painting. You know, and another fascinating thing about all the artists that we've met here on Artbeat is that you never stop learning. You learn from one another, you keep going to classes and all that sort of thing. I mean, what mm -hmm. do you expect to garner from that? Will it change your style or will it change your inspiration, do you think? I think so. I think it keeps you out of getting in a rut. Okay. And that you want to avoid. You can learn to be very polished in your painting, but if you don't want to grow, uh -huh. you're going to be stilted. I mean, you need to, to take lessons. Painting, to me, is an ongoing rest of my life deal. So to all total, how many years have you been painting? Well, I studied it, went to the university, and I was about 19, and I... And you're 21 now. And I'm 21 now, yeah. but it, there's been a few years in between. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a very lovely, lovely lady, and um, well, your artwork, you. you know, it, you can just feel that elegance coming from, from your creations, and it's always been a pleasure when I encounter you at the festivals or see you. So tell people where they, they can purchase your art. Well, I'm, uh, I'm featured now at uh, Art House, downtown Ocean Springs. I've been in 782 and I pulled out for just a short time because I needed to get a body of work together for different shows that I, need, I was going in. But I plan to go back to 782. And, uh, That's on uh, Main Street Biloxi. That's what they call part of the Main Street Biloxi uh, uh -huh. area. Galleria. Is right, it? right across from. Uh, uh, it's mm -hmm. across from Mary, Mary Mahone. Mahoney's. We, uh -huh. we, we shot some art beat there. And I've been downtown and still am downtown at Teresa's Gallery. Oh, yes. And I need to get more in there for Teresa. I haven't been real good to her. I need to get some in there. And then uh, I enter the shows up and down the Gulf Coast generally sell at those, you know, the Ocean Springs Art Show, the Singing River Art Show, um, wherever, yeah. yeah. So one thing that we want to do with 
Artbeat is to encourage you to go out and look at the work of these wonderful local artists and, and encourage us in the same way with some of the artists you care about. Let us know who you would like to see right here on Artbeat. Today we've been talking with Norma Seward and who knows what's next on Artbeat. I'm sure it'll be fascinating, whatever it is, so stay with us and uh, we'll see you next time right here on Artbeat. Thank you. If that doesn't go, I thank you. Yeah.